Hello everyone, welcome to Arif Sir Science Hub, your pathway to success in edX low level computer science. It's me Arif Islam and students call me Arif Sir. Uh, today we're going to talk about the secondary storage and cloud storage. Uh, that is in uh, chapter 2 and lesson 3. So we'll discuss about the magnetic secondary storage, the optical secondary storage, the electrical secondary storage, and definitely will cloud storage. Uh, we'll discuss in details about it. Okay. So first of all, we have to know about the secondary storage because uh, we already discussed about the primary storage in the previous lectures. Uh, so I hope it's very clear to you. So now we're going to talk about the secondary storage. So secondary storage means it's non-volatile and permanent storage. That means all the data that we want to store permanently, it will be stored in the secondary storage. And secondary storage are non-volatile types. That means if the power goes off, still uh, our data will be stored in the secondary storage. That's why it's non-volatile type. And the primary secondary uh, sorry, the primary storage are the volatile type storage okay that means if the power goes off then data will be erased from the primary storage but secondary storage will keep our data for the future use okay there are lots of secondary storage are available we already uh, told you that uh, for example uh, the hard disk drive the solid state drive the usb flash drives all of these uh, storage can be considered as secondary storage and those are non-volatile type storage that means uh, if the power goes off the data will be stored permanently okay so there are some common types of secondary storage uh, first of all magnetic storage then optical storage and electrical storage and for the example of uh, magnetic storage is the hard disk drive you can see in the image here this is the hard disk drive that means the magnetic secondary storage uh, th this is the optical secondary storage that means the CD DVD and this is the SSD solid state drive and it is uh, basically electrical secondary storage and all these types of storage will store data permanently okay so let's see about the magnetic secondary storage that means the hard disk drive okay so uh, we have to see uh, when we'll just um, open the box of the hard disk drive it will just look like this so if you just open the hard disk drive box it will just look like this okay so now we are going to talk about how uh, this uh, magnetic secondary storage or the hard disk drive going to work okay so you can see here it's a disk like <clears throat> a disk placed here and this disk basically made by a magnet okay and basically uh, the data will be stored by the property of uh, the magnets okay because from the physics we know that if any uh, magnetic par particles rotate at a certain speed it can generate a tiny amount of voltage or electricity okay so in this uh, disk that means the magnetic disk will rotate at a certain speed and on the surface or top of the surface it will create a tiny voltage and by this property we'll just store our data okay so we'll see how we can just store the data how we can read or write the data inside the second uh, magnetic secondary storage that means the hard disk drive so in the hard disk drive we'll have a magnetic disk that is called the platter and the platter basically uh, uh, placed with a spindle then we will have an actuator basically by the help of actuator data will be read and write so actuator has actuator arm actuator axis and actuator head okay that means uh, this disk will rotate at, the, at a certain speed and this actuator basically uh, shake from uh, left and right that means it will place or cover every surface of the magnetic disk because magnetic disk will rotate at a certain speed and this actuator will just vibrate like this from left to right okay then it will cover every surface of the platter and when it cover 
every uh, point of the platter or surface of the platter it can easily read or write the data from the disk okay and the actuator basically uh, convert the data that means when the data need to read or write it can be controlled by the actuator and there are some idea connector then jumper block and power connectors so this is the uh, inside view of a magnetic secondary storage that means the hard disk drive okay so when we just read something or when we something write from the um, hard disk drive the arm move move across to be above in the right track and uh, the required sector comes around under the head and the magnetized surface induce a tiny current in the head and the disk controller translate into uh, this current as a zero over one that means when it will find some tiny amount of current it can be considered as one and there is no current that can be considered as zero okay and all of our data will be stored as a binary form that means the zero or one okay now the optical secondary storage that means the cd or dvd so you can see uh, in the optical secondary storage that means in inside the cd or dvd the data will be stored uh, uh, by the property of uh, light beams that means uh, it will just uh, reflect on the disk as, uh, as a laser light and it will be reflect back uh, to the sensors and by the help of this property will store the optical uh, basically store the data of optical secondary storage that means inside the cd or dvd so optical devices use a laser to scan the surface of a uh, spinning disc made from metal and plastic because we know that our disc cd or dvd disc will be made by uh, by the combination of uh, metal and plastic and the disc surface is divided into tracks and with each track containing many flat area and hollows okay and the flat area are known as uh, lands and the hollow are the pits that means it will cover the lands and pits where that uh, that means if if we make any curve on a plane surface then the light cannot be reflected back from the curve that means from the pits that means where the land is available the data uh, that means the laser beam will be reflected back to the scanner or the sensor and when the light will fall on the pit that means the uh, light won't come back uh, reflected re reflected back to the scanners okay so when the laser shines on the disk surface land reflect the light back whereas pits scatter the laser beam okay and a sensor looks for the reflected light and reflected light uh, represent a binary one and when the light not reflected back it can be considered as uh, zero and basically we'll store data as a uh, zero or one that means in the binary form okay so when we read the data the disk spin in the drive to ensure all data can be read and the tracking mechanism moves the laser into the correct position over the disk and the laser shines uh, on the disk when it is just fall under the land or reflected area and signals from the sensor are translated into zero or one because we already told that i just told you that when it is fall the uh, when when the laser light will fall the land it will reflect it back and when it is fall on the pits then the laser light on on just reflected back it, it will be scattered then it will be considered as zero and when the laser light will reflect it back then it can be considered as one and by this property all of our data will be stored in the cd or dvd okay then electrical secondary storage that means flash drives that means our ssd so solid state storage that means the ssd basically use our chips and it's called the nand flash that means it's made by a transistor that name is nand flash and it's basically uh, you can see in the figure here we have uh, a image of a transistors okay 
and transistor has a three pin or three points one is source another one is drain and another one is control gates that means the source will be considered as the input and drain as the output and control gate basically uh, control the flow of the electrons okay so you can see here if we put uh, and we know that the transistor basically made by semiconductors that means it, it, it uh, can be considered as the conductive and non-conductive material that, that means the isolating materials and in the NAND flash that means uh, this transistor has an electrical pole that means uh, you can see the silicon sub, uh, substrates here so when we will we'll just make flow the electrons from the source to drain gate it will be move over there okay and you can see there uh, this this basically is a metal this also a metal or mean or, or that means the source and drain is a conductor and in between them it has a insulator okay so this is the electron poles where the electrons will be uh, tapped that means when the electrons will flow from source to drain it will be trapped under the uh, silicon substrate that means the electron poles so when the electron poles are full of electrons it will be considered as zero that means no output will be given that means we won't uh, get any outputs over the j and it will consider as zero and when the electron pole is empty that means all the electrons will be passed through the drain that means from input to output then it will be considered as one and by this property by the help of this property we will store data in the uh, solid state drive or the electrical secondary storage okay and when data read from the chief what will happen so it will control signal and that is identify which beats it to be read out or apply a small voltage that means it will apply a small voltage to read the data and if the electron pole is empty and the transistor turns one and a one is read out i already told you that if uh, the electron pole is empty then we'll we'll just uh, get back some outputs and if we don't have uh, any electrons on the outputs that means all the electrons will be trapped in the electron poles and the control signals are sent to the read uh, other bits and when data is written to the chief and control signal identify which bit to be written or it will apply a higher voltage okay so that means on uh, sometimes uh, in the control gate or the control pin will we will have to apply a small voltage or sometimes we have to apply a higher voltage to control the read write the data and this pull electrons into the uh, pole of this transistor recording zero or one in the binary form of the data and that's the way we can just read and write the data in the solid state drive or the secondary storage okay. the future of data storage that means uh, flash memory uh, constraints then ongoing uh, advancement and emerging technology so limited uh, rewrites so in the flash memory we have limited rewrite that means we can only rewrite the data on million times then breakdown due to higher voltage because for the flash memory or flash storage we have to apply a voltage so it can be breakdown when we apply the higher voltage then ongoing adv uh, advancement so magnetic hard disk uh, growing capacity and shrinking size and flash memory is basically co uh, continual improvements because nowadays the flash memory uh, basically uh, improving day by day and we have some emerging technology because memory stores the asp it's very super fast and high capacity memory and race track memory that means uh, it's uh, made by ibm that's called race track memory so we have three types of emerging technology one is uh, memory store another one is uh, uh, rtm that is race track memory and the quantum computings that means the qubits so we'll further discuss about the qubits uh, in next time or in the future so the race track memory is very fast to access and 
that definitely the quantum computing or the qubits are for advanced processing or advanced purpose for the data okay and cloud storage so cloud storage basically when we'll just store data remotely and access it any times uh, from anywhere by the help of internet that basically will be considered as a cloud storage and we have lots of service providers like dropbox google drive amazon drive OneDrive, then icloud all those can be considered as the cloud storage okay and what is the functionality of the cloud storage so you can uh, you can call it uh, upload organize or download the file if needed so you can just organize the data organize the files you can just uh, uh, upload the files and you can just download the files so that's the main purpose basically for the cloud storage because we want to store our data we want to retrieve our data from the storage whenever we just need it okay and the abstractions it hides hardware and uh, internet complexities so when we use the cloud storage we don't uh, need any hardware requirements but the internet connectivity is mandatory because without the help of internet connectivity we cannot access our data we cannot upload the data we cannot download any data on the cloud storage okay and user benefits so focus on safety so data stored securely and this security basically provided by the cloud service provider that means uh, if we consider that dropbox google drive amazon drive on drive whatever it is they will provide security to us and they are responsible for making uh, secure our data okay and all the hardware and software security they will, that, that basically provided by the service provider that means cloud storage service providers okay and easy of retrieval it's very simple and on the de on demand access that means whenever i want i just want to access our storage okay then there are some advantages and disadvantages of cloud storage we have to discuss about it so <clears throat> you can see so first advantage accessibility so we can access it from anywhere at any time if we have the internet connectivity it's a great uh, advantage because we have lots of data can be stored and we can access it from anywhere in the world uh, if we have the internet connectivity then scalability so easily we can just uh, increase the capacity of the storage okay suppose uh, if we purchase uh, 100 gb of storage if we need more storage then easily we can just uh, increase the capacity then automatically backup so data will be uh, protected against loss that means the service provider will keep a backup of the data so that uh, we can just retrieve the data in emergency cases and then co collaborations and seamless uh, uh, team collaborations so we can just uh, make a team collaborations when we use the cloud storage because uh, whoever uh, want to access the data or whoever want to store the data easily uh, easily they can just store or retrieve the data from the cloud storage and cost savings is basically reduce the hardware cost because if you want to purchase uh, a huge amount of uh, storage uh, hard hardware devices it, it will cost a lot and there are some disadvantages of cloud storage like uh, internet dependency i told you that if we don't have the internet connectivity then uh, it's not possible to access the cloud storage data that means the internet uh, connectivity is mandatory so if we don't have the internet uh, connectivity the, then it's not possible to access our data so in the emergency case if we don't have the internet connectivity then it's not possible to access our data the security concern so risk of unauthorized access that means so, uh, somehow if someone uh, uh, just get our uh, access key or access tokens then easily they can just access to the device or to uh, the cloud storage okay then subscription cost so it's basically a monthly or yearly subscription basis cost so we have to pay monthly or yearly uh, but if we just bought the hardware it, it just cost on time but we have to maintain the subscription cost and limited customizations so less control over the settings so the service providers will provide some specific amount of settings or functionality 
that we uh, we can access otherwise we cannot make any uh, uh, customized settings or options for the cloud storage and data transfer speed so potential delay in large file transfer so if we have a large file then it will make a delay to transfer the file either we want to upload it or want to download it from the cloud storage okay so i hope it's pretty clear to you uh, about the cloud storage and still if you have any problems or any confusions uh, don't forget to uh, our forum so you can just ask any questions uh, you can ask me questions in the comment sections i'll uh, reply to you okay and those who are new to my channel or my page don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to share to your friends and family okay so that's all for today's class so we'll uh, see in the next class till then uh, take care okay bye